So you thought you were done with League, huh? Think again, because today we're gonna talk about how to get back into League of Legends and start owning some noobs again. Yo yo, Trash Dog Dirk here, but you can call me Trash. Yes you can. This is actually my very first YouTube upload and I have much more gaming content planned. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking the video to help me and my channel grow and to stay up to date for future guides and other League related content. Now let's get to the video. Lately you've been hopping games, looking for something that gets you hooked again, but nothing. Nothing feels that gap the way League did back in the day. So you've decided to start playing League again, but then you realize you're not owning noobs like the way you used to do. Today we're going to talk about a few things to consider when getting back into League of Legends. This was exactly me at the start of the year 2021. Last time I really played League of Legends was back in Season 4 where I peaked at Platinum 2. After that, I quit League of Legends and didn't really play the next seasons. Aside from my 10 promo games that I would play every season, and I would get placed in low gold. Aside from that, the last season and this season, I got placed into bronze 4. Yes, bronze freaking 4. So I started playing again and just started conquering ranked as a support main. I climbed to silver in about 20 games. Right now, I'm working my way to gold. And after that, who knows? Maybe we'll reach plat again or go beyond it. Future videos about climbing between certain ranks coming soon, so stay tuned. However, before I got back into rank, there were a few things I did and I would like to share with you today to help you out when you get back into League of Legends. The number one tip I have for you is don't get discouraged by your own misplays. League is a complex game and you've probably lost some or most of the muscle memory you once had. You'll make stupid mistakes while you know you're making them. You'll have good ideas but execute them poorly and think, what the heck did I just do? However, it will get better. Don't be too hard on yourself and just play. Practice makes perfect. Something I did in the very beginning was play some A ramps. There's room for error and it's not that competitive. You can familiarize yourself with the different key bindings and game mechanics like movement and camera control. With its high fight intensity, it could also help you position yourself in team fights. It also opens up a door to be introduced to newer champions. This brings me to tip number two. Read up on all the new champions and know what their abilities look like and what they can do. League has recently introduced a lot of new funky champions like This guy cannot be killed Fiego. What is this kid, Kiana? What is this everything, Aphelios? Sona on steroids. Yasuo 2.0. And don't forget the bowling day lady. Honestly though, all these new champions can have very interesting quirks to their abilities. Like for example Seraphine. Her ult reaches further the more champions she hits, like shown in this clip. Let's watch that again. Even though I read her abilities before I got back into the game, it was quite a few games later that I noticed how far it can actually travel if you place the ultimate right. It's important to know these things when you decide to play her, so you know how to catch those extra enemies and cash in that extra gold. Or maybe you play against her and now you know what to do and how to play around it. Don't forget that they also reworked and updated a lot of the older champions. Some of these might look and feel like completely new champions and some have kept their feel and most of their abilities but have slight adjustments to make them feel less wonky. A pretty cool champion that got reworked his fiddlesticks. He got to keep his ult and all the best bits of his ult kit. But his Q, W and E have been made more interesting. Also, he can now place copies of himself to truly scare the frick out of unsuspecting enemies. Then for tip number 3. Start maining a champion. Pick a champion you're already familiar with, or try out one of the new ones. If you're having a hard time getting back into the game, start off with something simple. This will help you focus less on the ins and outs of your champion, and more on managing the minimap, creep score, and traits with the enemy champions. I did a bit of both myself. I picked Seraphine to main at first. Her kit is very simple and comparable to Sona and Lux. These were champions I've played a lot in the previous seasons. I played her as a support, which led me to focus more on the minimap and warding. Her abilities are easy to land and her ult is pretty straightforward, aside from the whole extension thing we've spoken about before. Maining a champion will also make it easier to understand 
the mechanics of the game itself, because you don't have to think about the mechanics of every champion you're trying out. As I said before, there are loads of new champions out there, some have very unique kits and probably require more learning and others are quite simple. Tip number 4. Mythical items. If you've played the new season, you've probably seen them, heard about them and even used them. However, these are not to be underestimated. Mythical items can completely change the playstyle of a champion, allow them to do things they couldn't do before. Often, these items give a big power spike for the champion you're playing and enhances the next items you buy. To be fair, the mythical items are worthy of a standalone video, but I don't have that yet. Until then, you should be able to find enough guides from other YouTubers. But to summarize, you can only own one mythical item at the same time. Owning a mythic item enhances all other legendary items with an extra stat. Mythic items often have unique effects that can add an extra mini ability to your kit or a strong passive effect that enhances your kit. For example, we take one of my mains, Pike. There are two mythical items that Pike could really benefit from. Duskblade gives you almost mini root, slowing an enemy for 99% for a quarter of a second, and then does extra damage when auto attacking a champion. This effect has a cooldown of 15 seconds. Also, when a target you've damaged in the last 3 seconds dies, this cooldown resets. And on top of that, you go into true stealth for 1.5 seconds, giving you opportunity to escape or go in for another sneaky kill. Then, there is also Prowler's Claw, allowing you to dash through an enemy, dealing a bit of damage, and then for the next 3 seconds, you do 50% more damage to your enemy. This allows Spike to use the item to dash and engage and get close without putting his abilities on cooldown. Then you burst an enemy down with the auto attacks and abilities you still have up with a 15% bonus damage. Since the arrival of the current season, Riot has also reworked the shop. Yes, it's quite a change, and sometimes we don't like change. However, if you give the shop a chance, you'll quickly find out it's actually really good. It's also very new player friendly. With little tags, they show you in what situation this item could work. Also, the recommended tab in the shop will change depending on what champions you play against. For example, the shop could recommend anti-healing items against a Soraka or Swain. The suggested items are generally good items to build and you can never really go wrong with them. So give the new shop a chance and soon you'll find out how to use it and how to efficiently buy items to get back to killing your enemies again. And last but not least, tip number 5. If you're struggling like I was with itemization, runes and new champions, I could recommend you to use software blitz.gg. I wasn't sure if I was going to include this one in the list because some people don't want to run extra software when playing League. But this one is the one I've used and still use every game. As far as I know, this app is permitted by Riot and it's not against the terms of service to use it. It's only showing you information and uses the entry points that Riot permits developers to use. So what does blitz.gg do? First of all, it gives you basic information like tier lists based on actual win rates. These tier lists can be filtered by league rank and role. This way, you always know what champs are doing good and which are not. It also shows you your match history and stats you have with these champions. It gets spicier once you get into champ select. The moment you go into champ select, it will tell you the rank of your teammates and what role they usually play. So you know you're dealing with someone that got filled or main set role. It also adds little useful tags to your teammates like hard to gank, solo killer or a bad water. When other users see me, they might notice I have a little pony icon, which when you hover over it says that I'm a pike one trick pony. Who would have guessed? Once champions are being picked, it will show you the AD and AP ratio of your team. It will also show you how much true damage your team has. Then it will show you different builds with different win ratios, and you can switch to builds that specifically work against certain enemy champions. It will also give you information about the champions in your enemy team and what abilities they have and how to play around it. Then, after the game it shows you the stats that matter to you. For me as a support main, it will tell me how my efficient score is compared to the other supports in my league rank. It even takes the game length in account. It gives you feedback on what you should work on like, at 8 minutes and 30 seconds you were holding 2 stacks on your ward trinket for more than 3 minutes, try to ward more, it's free. Or, you did little damage compared to other pikes this game, try to auto attack more in between abilities. Hi there, it's me Trashtar Dirk and thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please leave a like in the comments. If you don't, then don't. It's simple as that. But if you want to watch me on Twitch, you can do so on twitch.tv slash Link's in the description. See you there. And remember, no trash talking in the comments.